Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper. That is 5th June 2017. The first article, The Economy in the Time of Narendra Modi. So here let us emphasize on what is the status of economy after three years of Narendra Modi's government. Let me explain it this way. Initially, the shift was explained as a move from agricultural and services sector towards the manufacturing sector. Because agriculture sector is overloaded and underemployed. Services sector has no capabilities to generate employment. So in this context, manufacturing sector can address the problems of both. But manufacturing sector to be successful, investment flow has to be high. And added to that, the workers have to be given necessary skills. It means people who are migrating from agriculture to manufacturing sector Upgradation of the skills is very much important. So in a nutshell, employment generation is stated to be the main objective. At least, they aim to generate one crore of jobs. In this context, today, Make in India is yet to realize its stated goal. So what I want to put is, government has rightly emphasized on manufacturing sector through Make in India. But Make in India is yet to show its results. But can it show its results is the second question. So I have to observe how the investment flows into the manufacturing sector are. The private investment is not peaking into the manufacturing sector. And the second thing is, ease of doing business, which is meant to increase the investment flow, how is it working? If you see, ease of doing business is to, remain, uh, to remove the constraints on the supply side. But in India now, problem is more on demand side. So, what are the reasons for weakening of demand? You know that global slowdown is one reason. But however, when India is moving past on its, uh, fast on its growth path, there is shooting of its uh, fast moving car, or shooting of the tires of the fast moving car. That's how it has been stated by Zin Reyes. What he stated is, demonetization is like shooting into the tires of a fast moving car. It means as India was about to pick up growth momentum, demonetization has got worst impact on the manufacturing sector and also construction sector. So it has led to decrease in private consumption. And this private consumption reduction has led to fall in demand. So already private investment flows are low due to policy paralysis. To an extent, government did a remarkable job in the policy paralysis area it has eased only on the supply side bottlenecks. But demonetization has killed the demand, which is a major force to attract the investments. And coming to agriculture, we have two successive droughts. Because of this, agricultural output is very low. As this year has got robust output, we can expect a better growth in agriculture this year. And then... Output loss in manufacturing and construction due to demonetization. In this case, government's attitude is also a question. Government has made fiscal consolidation, inflation targeting as its two engines of the policy. So these cannot be conducive to growth. Fiscal consolidation, it means fiscal deficit has to be reduced. Inflation has to be checked. It means the monetary flow or money flow in the economy will be very less. So without the capital flow, you, can, you cannot expect a greater growth. So these are the changes which we need to understand. Next is, need for corrective action. So what this article emphasizes is, demonetization has import, impacted economic growth. How did it do that? By decreasing private consumption, which is essential for demand creation in the economy and also by decreasing the credit growth. So banks are being involved themselves with managing demonetization rather than addressing the credit needs. And second is the NPA stress deserts of the bank are another reason over here which have not provided or facilitated a proper credit growth. Let's go to the next article, European Variation. So, the globe is in a flux. So, global order is changing. So, it means that traditional alliances are changing across the Atlantic. It means that 
Europe and USA have shared a strong alliance which is bound by NATO. Now, Mr. Trump, President Trump, he is not ready to reaffirm Article 5 of NATO, which talks about collective defense. And he wants the European Union countries to share the burden of cost related to collective defense. And second is, USA has a huge trade deficit with the European Union, and he has repeatedly mentioned and warned European Union. It is a signal for him to move towards protectionism. And the worst is the move out from the climate change pact. So, this clearly indicates that the USA is not respecting the traditional alliances and, is it move, and it is moving towards transactionalism. In spite of these happenings, European Union is more worried about Russia because Russia is seen as a threat to its liberal order itself. And on the other side, China is becoming more attractive with its investments and also with new opportunities it is trying to create with its One Belt, One Road initiative. So the trust between European Union and China is increasing. So in this, India is about to join Shanghai Cooperation Organization which was spearheaded by Russia. So SEO is seen as a counter force to NATO. Here, as globe is in flux, India has to carefully gaze its alliances, its coalitions. So we are in a changing world order. So India has to define what its position can be in its changing world order. So this GST countdown, it is about the practical aspects. Now, GST is, uh, our GST is aimed at giving one nation one tax. Are we any way close to this? Because we have five different tax labs. And also, based on the price of various goods in each sector, different slabs are being given to them. So it means the complexity of indirect tax regime, it did not move away with the coming up of GST. And also GST network, this is not yet prepared to handle billions of invoices. What has to be done with the existing stocks? Will there be any credit input for the existing stocks? What is this anti-profitering clause? These are not yet been made or these are not yet been made clear by the government. So that's why a hasty implementation of GST can be counterproductive. That's what this article talks about. Accounting for three good years. So by Venka and I do, this article enumerates what are the various programs of the government. Here he talks about farmers. These are the primary focus. So credit growth to the farmers. Pradhan Mantri Fazal Bhima Yojana, a crop insurance scheme, and Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sinchai Yojana, which is a drip irrigation or water facility, irrigation facility to the farmers. And then there are welfare schemes and women related schemes, self help group schemes, and he has enumerated all these schemes from Jandan Yojana to Pradhan Mantri Fazal Bhima Yojana. Everything has been enumerated in this article, so it is more factual in its information. Silencing the media is political suicide. So our question in UPSC here can be the role of media. I can put the role of media as a course correction institution with regard to politics are concerned. If politics are power, it tries to use its high-handedness to control the media, then there is no other institution which can guide it to its, uh, uh, during its wrong path. So that's why media has to be seen as a moral check against power and political leaders have to take it in a proper light. That's what is this article talks about. Because Ms. Jailalita, when she was in power, she filed defamation suits against the newspapers and also used privileges of the legislature to curtail the voice of the media, especially Hindu. So, finally, the corruption charges it have led to arrest of Ms. Sashikala and also confiscation of properties of Ms. Jailalita. Mind the diversity. What is this article about? So, cultural identities, these are are ultimately the choices of individuals. Understand carefully what choices we make in our day-to-day -day life with regard to our religion, faith, our ways of life. Ultimately, they, ma they manifest over years as cultural identities. 
cultural symbols these are expression of these cultural identities so politicization and command or manipulation of these cultural symbols is unwarranted and it is not in the ethos of india if you take cultural diversity it is in very much in the dna of india any disturbance to this cultural diversity will lead to instability and violence so that's why diversity shall be seen as a strength of india so that's what we need to understand here now coming to front page again terrorist attack in london so we need not much worry about this now understand it as terrorism what are the various legal framework which india has to fight terrorism from that perspective you need to understand that and women to get combat role in army so we have to see it from equality question so if you take about article 15 no person shall be discriminated by the state only on the grounds of sex only means sex shall not be the sole criteria for discrimination it can be one of the criteria or associated criteria with the others secondary criteria so this is been stated as a reason for discrimination against women so general rawat statement that women also be allowed to combat rules is a positive step towards gender justice and equality now with the hyderabad local paper we have p sainath's news and he spoke about cow slaughter so upsc interviews if you observe they have asked specific questions on beef ban etc so in this case cow slaughter what he says it goes again is the cows itself so the livestock statistics if you take there is a decrease by 9% in the last year the reason is so you have to have a cycle so if the cycle is missed the population of the cows is bound to increase and also market for the cow sale is going to decrease as market is uh, decreasing so an animal which is not productive will become a burden on the farmer and he tries to leave it into the forest for the wild animals so it means lack of market for cow ultimately will act again as the cow itself and will act again as stem protecting the cow itself by the farmers that's what is p sainath's argument over here so these are the articles for today thank you very much now i have a small announcement to make this year total 108 students they have expressed their gratitude for our current affairs program who got selected this year among this the most special is mr abhishek agarwal who is i think a chartered accountant and he said he wants to address all the students through this particular platform for, through this particular uh, current affairs thing after his prelims so we will see and second coming to law excellence ias so i am not using this platform to promote law excellence ias just there is some marketing concern so i am just expressing it so the major problem which i see is if a student goes for a mock interview or something it has been expressed as a rank by the institutes so obviously the person who are do i mean who are genuinely doing some work they feel disheartened in the process but one thing which i felt very happy this year is muzamil khan and his statement before a tv today at 5:30 it is being telecasted what is the role of teacher in your life then he took my name and he stated that a beautiful car is useless without a steering and he acted as that steering for me that's what mr muzamil has expressed and i'm very thankful to him for uh, those generous comments um i mean i'm overwhelmed that's how i can put it as thank you very much